Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Uh, it is a G-Day for the kickoff of the African biggest football fiesta, the African Cup of Nations. And all the 24 participating nations are already in Cote d'Ivoire. As the host nation opens the tournament today against Guinea-Bissau, a competition well known to others. But some will be looking forward to write their names for the very first time. I'm talking in terms of players. And few hours to the start, the news from the Lions Den is not friendly at all. Team captain of the team captain, uh, the captain of the indomitable Lions, Vincent Abubakar, is reported to have sustained an injury that may keep him out of the tournament. And in this edition of the program, we shall be reviewing the situation and zooming on the different teams and their chances. You are watching 360 degrees on Canada International and we are beaming live from the economic capital Douala. Do not go away. Welcome back, and we go straight uh, to welcome our guests of today. I have some gentlemen with me in the studio. Uh, I begin uh, from my right, it's a colleague, <laughs> Noj Avi uh, Epie. I'm sure I got the name very well. Yes, sir. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is your very first time on 360 degrees. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure, Harry. It's a pleasure for me, and I'm happy. And good afternoon to all co panelists. And I hope we have fun within the next one hour. Sure, we are going to have fun within the next one. I move over to uh, our sports analyst. He goes by the name uh, Ntenme Lucas. Did I pronounce the name well, sir? You did your best. <laughs> Thank that, you. That name has caused me a lot of trouble. Mm. <laughs> uh, good afternoon and good afternoon to the co panelists. Good afternoon to all the daily viewers of the program. Mm. And allow me to say my condolences to two persons, two families, I mean the families of Mr. Joko Tatam Nazel. Who has been the coach of Kaisa and has trained mm. players such as uh, Mukanjo, Siani, and mm. Kulu, and the families of the Professor Joseph Ona, who passed on last week. You know, Mr. Joseph Ona was a, has been a, a president of the Normalization Committee the and president, the president of the Committee de Sage of Canon Sport of Yangi. I'm happy to be here and to extend it. This is my granddaughter I used to see. On the TV. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Lucas. And I move over to uh, the, the person close to my left is uh, Dr. Ndimancho Michael. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thanks so much, Asim. It's a pleasure to have also the other panelists with me here and that we are gathered around uh, to actually pay this religion that we call football, of course, that leaves no one indifferent. And it's a pleasure to be here on Canada to comment for the very first time on this program uh, uh, 360 de degrees and to be able to commune with all Cameroonians. I know when we talk about football in Cameroon, it's a legion. That's why I have to make that mention and to say that uh, it is going to be an interesting month for all the Cameroonians. And you know, it is a moment like this that we forget about all the difficulties that we're going through in Cameroon. Mm. And then we only get up on the 11th of February to, to realize that we had forgotten about our difficulties. <laughs> Thank you. And to our fellow yes. viewers, uh, everything being equal, we are going to have uh, the next person that will be joining us. And uh, everything being equal, we shall be having updates from our uh, uh, special envoys to uh, the Ivory Coast, that is, uh, those who are currently in Abidjan. So we shall be expecting updates from them, and uh, everything being equal, we shall have them. I go straight to you with you, uh, uh, APA. How did you feel when you got the news that uh, Vincent Abouaka could be out of the AFCO? Generally, it's, it's always a very sad news when you, you have one of your prolific strikers mm -hmm. and going into a competition like this where we need to be able to take our chances. It's important to note that Vincent Mwaka is uh, uh, one of those players who always takes his chances when he has the opportunity to mm. with the national team. And going into the competition like this without him, it's really stressful and it's really it's, it's worrisome, uh, to be honest. But at the same time, I always feel like uh, every negative situation is an opportunity. Yeah. I think there are other players there who are capable of filling in his shoes 
there are players who are capable of. They just need to to understand that okay, this is an opportunity for them. Mm. Yeah, Vincent Boca had the opportunity to prove himself. He has done so. He has given it all, and if he's not going, he was a top scorer in uh, exactly. the Arcon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, if he's going into, if he's not going into this one, it's it's disturbing for us. But I think it's an opportunity for other players to step in mm -hmm. and say, look, I know you guys think only of Vincent Boca, but here am I. I can do it too. Thank you. Uh, it should be a big blow to coach Rigo Song Bahana. A handicap. No, not an handicap because uh, they have players in that, in that team. Mm. Remember that in that team we have Faris Mbanya mm. who plays somewhere. It is quite uh, uh, ob obvious that we can do not the same as Beben San Waka, but we have another players on that list of 49 that uh, Mr. Uh, the list, Song selected. The list uh, of 27? No, no, for, for 49. The I mean, pre-selected pre 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 list. Pre uh, you can choose from those who were not selected before, mm -hmm. as uh, the Ballon d'Or of uh, Cameroon, who is uh, 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 Emmanuel Mahob. Yes. Emmanuel Mahob, yes, he can, he can fit to the task. But they, they, are, they are not playing at the same level, you, you see. But as, the, as Mr. the journalist say, it is a sad news. But they, uh, this situation gives the opportunity to another player to improve and to say that uh, we are on. We we came here not to only watch or see uh, another people playing, but we are here to to also improve ourselves and give the Afcon to to Cameroon. You know, in 2017, mm -hmm. our was not the the famous player of the team, but we won the Afcon. He, he was he watched certain games, but he came in at the at the final and he made what uh, we needed to to win the to win the cup. Yes. Uh, Michael, when you look at the situation, Andre Onana, uh, he will be coming late. Brian Bomo, who, you, who was already like a, a key player up front for Cameroon, got injured and wasn't caught up for the AFCON. Uh, Chupu Moting wasn't caught up. Now, Vincent Abubakar. Which means that the only maybe experienced players up front now is uh, Jake Clinton and Carl Toko Ekambi. Uh, and, and, to, and to an extent, Mumingamal, can the younger generation really take their chances and uh, prove their worth? Yes, just like in politics, today we are saying that uh, the world is the world of the youth uh, and that the future belongs to the youth. I think mm. that it applies to in football. Uh, in Cameroon football, we have ever known that no player is indispensable mm. and that in, in a single win, we have more than two, three, four players that are, I mean, are competent to play in those wins and therefore i don't really think that we should cry over spirit make this should only offer an opportunity mm. for other players players to rise up i'm also mind you a talk came to fame rules to fame fame due to uh, partly the demise of this real job uh, during those years we should not forget that yes. uh, that is when a talk rose up and we started seeing a talk i, I think that, yeah and then you got these chances mm. so this is an opportunity for these young players to seize their chances mm. seize it that's what i mean i mean now you know sometimes nature plays its own role in mm. some of these things mm. and the fact that some of them have been trying to play maybe even half you know, the time and they are not able to this is the opportunity for them to seize the opportunity and you know when opportunities like this come mm. you don't squander mm. and therefore i think that they should be working strong in as much as we regret the fact that uh abu Akob Vincent, he has done much for cameroon this is what i regret that he has done much for cameroon mm. and maybe as he's dragging to the end of his career we should see him go through without any incident but of course talking about having a loophole in the cameroon squad i think that this should be an advantage rather than a disadvantage for cameroon uh, thank you and the good news is that cameroon has the the the, the, the opportunity to replace vincent abubakar within 24 hours before the kickoff of uh, the competition but then uh, from the report we got uh, they are still waiting for the medical report to know if vincent abubakar will be fit or not and uh, from what we got uh, from the state media uh, that report will be made, will, will be made soon, uh, today. So, uh, in a case where Vincent Abouaka is supposed to be substituted or is supposed to be replaced, who should Song go for? Well, I think, I think that, uh, I think, uh, first, mm -hmm. the players he already has on his, in his list are, are good enough, honestly, are good enough. I think he should simply give an opportunity to, to, to anyone that he feels, mm. I, I really don't have a, a specific person in mind, but I think I think his his squad selection was uh, 
was good. I personally really think that. I think his squad selection, his, his squad selection was really good. Mm. And whosoever he thinks is is is, uh, is is capable of filling in the shoes, he will call. But I think the squad he has, mm. let's assume that even if we're not in a position to replace yes. Abu Bakr, the squad he has is good enough to get into the competition. We have we have players that are on fire. Uh, Mumbanya is on fire. Uh, Kudu is on fire. Mm. And so, don't you think there is a difference between being on fire in the club and then uh, a level of national team? That's also, that's also what we, call. we have been talking about. Uh, I, I, I watched uh, an analysis the other day. Many people say in the club, Abu Bakr is little known, but when he comes back, he has that fighting spirit. No, no. That he, no, even even players, in his, even in his club, he performs. Like that. Mm. There are players like that. When they, they perform in the club, but when they come in the, to the national team, they don't perform. So do you, share the, clubs, same, do you share the same view no, with him? No, that let, me, let, me, let me go with through, my, have, through my... Some can survive. Let, they, they, they are another player that come to the uh, national team, they perform. When they are in the club, mm. they, don't, they don't perform. You can see it with many teams. Not only at Waka Vincent, but with many teams. Mm. You can see it with uh, uh, this man. How do they call him? Even Jake Clinton, when he came here the first time, he was he was performing well. But when he goes to the club, it's not the he doesn't realize the same performances that we, we saw we, we we used to see in the national team. The environment, uh, the style of play, to matters. Yeah, yeah, of course it matters very much, and that is why sometimes I had a problem with uh, the uh, national. Uh, team coach when sometimes you give some rules that you must belong to a club abroad before I mean you are called or before you become to a club not to, abroad uh, I mean to a club <laughs> yes. anyway uh -huh. uh, but we have had a, a, a person of five colleagues who had, had a club in Victoria United but he was not called up because people think that the clubs abroad are much more uh, you know uh, they have but more he has never signed. He has no, never I think, signed. I think the five Collins has never signed for you he has never United. signed he simply trained with them yes. for a couple of uh, days well, well, that, that, they were that's discussing ab about a probably contract, but the contract is not go through. Mm. But th th that still uh, doesn't really make some sense sometimes because from an analysis we are getting, you know, sometimes you can just be uh, of playing for the national team and you are having flying the colors. Mm. But when you get even to the club level, you do not fly the colors. Should you be selected on the basis that you only play well when you get to the club level? Uh, like we are talking about Vincent Abubakwa. I mean, this is uh, a monument in Cameroon when it comes to football. Sure. But uh, over there, most people don't watch the, their league games because they don't. His performance is not up to the task mm -hmm. and the expectation that we think should be. But some, you know, I, I think it is just because at one moment uh, football has become something. You know, football has, has been so much monetized in such a way that you cannot really determine what used to be in the 1990s. <laughs> yeah, that is what is happening. So it's a big problem. Yes. <laughs> And just to, indicate, yes. <laughs> just to indicate that, talking about the AFCON this year, uh, the, the cash price witnessed a rise of uh, about 40%, if I'm not making a mistake, yes, 40%. Yeah. Just to yeah. add to what you were saying, that, that uh, there is a lot of money, a lot of money, money football. football so. Did you watch the, the, la the last game of the Lions against uh, Zambia, the test match? No, the information I got from that is that uh, they say they cannot broadcast, broadcast broadcast the game because of the, the commitment that the two federations have. So I did not, I did not, I only read information on the social media, but I, you know the social media, some informations are not, are not at time true. Avi, when you look at that game, yeah. uh, do you have the impression that Song and his team is ready for this tournament? No, yes, Song and his team is ready. Honestly, Song is ready. The, the Song is ready. I think Song has a clear, because when we talk about readiness, mm. In football, the first thing is understanding who your eleven key players are. Yes. So if we if, if we if we want to take into consideration Vincent Baka right now, mm. and maybe let's say uh, Mbemo that got injured too. Apart from those two players, mm. some idea as per who his starting eleven is has already been very clear. I, I think it's been very clear. But with that with with that in mind, you know, preparative games like that. Are opportunities for for coaches to look at what blend uh, works best yeah yeah what blend works best and who should be who should be associated with who mm. and but i think they are ready i think they are ready many were of the opinion but that i don't know i don't know if, do, uh, i don't know if it is true i don't know if it is true <laughs> but i heard that mr Mkudu will got an injury that would prevent him to play the next match of Cameroon. i don't know if this no is true. Mkudu is okay we have not had okay. any official uh, report from that 
I want oh. some some didn't uh, permit me. Some didn't do many. Like I said, these games are opportunities for the coach to know who should, this, that is, that's the last game before the competition. Mm. And you don't expect him to be doing rotations like it was his he, he started eleven. He, knows he, he started eleven on that day. Mm. It's almost his looks like the, he's the, starting the eleven. Starting 11. Exactly. Mm. So that's what people don't understand. And he needs to watch them really play. Mm. Such that if if he realizes that there is a change he needs to make, he's sure that this change is necessary because he has really watched them play. And I think that's why he didn't do a lot of substitutions. The, the, the information I can I can I can analyze on that on that on that match is that uh, they were at stage C's and he needed a match a game for the players to to entertain. Mm. But on that in that type of game you cannot come and put your your philosophy on the game so that all your opponent will know will look will be seeing you and be analyzing how you play, how you attack and how you defend. You you, you can see that during that game he he put uh, at the same side Yongwa and No Tolo. We know that they say that the two guys play on the, the same post. Michael, there is uh, one fundamental problem, the Onana issue. It is true, we've heard uh, Fekar Food, Manchester United having an agreement and all that. But then, this attitude from our goalkeeper, is it that maybe Song was already aware of this? Because uh, during the press conference to release, to publish uh, the list of 27, many were surprised why he called the four goalkeepers. Is it that he was already aware that uh, this is what will happen? This is very possible. This is very possible, but I regret to say that uh, this is an issue that FIFA has to, to actually uh, put some kind of stringent, even though there are measures, because mm -hmm. FIFA has to actually put some stringent measures on, on players on this, because uh, according to the rules of FIFA, FIFA, when your national team is in need of you, their club is supposed to release you without any other argument. Yeah. But then we have seen this lackadaisical like, attitude from uh, 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 the, the coach, the mm -hmm. which shows that there is more to it than meets the eye. Because a lot of people ask questions, why are you calling three goalkeepers? Uh, 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 well, uh, four goalkeepers. Four goalkeepers at mm -hmm. the time. I mean, there was something abnormal about it. Mm -hmm. Now we are beginning to understand that there was something behind the, the, the under the table negotiation somehow and I, that's what I keep on talking about the monetization, uh, monetization of football mm. who knows the, uh, the, the agreement between Song and Onana there's something must have gone on uh, because you, you see that uh, the coach is very very I mean he doesn't feel I mean any issue about it for him it is okay imagine Onana whom everybody believes and thinks that I mean Afcon is the Africans World Cup, mm. and it is one of the events where the whole country is glued to their TV set to watch, and therefore it is supposed to make be made strong, adorable, and holy. The Afcon is supposed to make holy means that what? When you failed in an in, 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 in to, to to answer to a call like this one, yeah. it means that you have failed to your country. It means that you have sinned. That is why I'm against saying, your yeah, of course, you have sinned <laughs> against your country, and therefore in the issues like this. That everybody is waiting for Onana to come up, and Onana gives—I mean, they give us the reason that he's supposed to be around 11 hours late for the Afcon, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, Not uh, it is very clear that Onana will not be on Monday. Yes, because he will be arriving on Monday morning. I guess yeah. so. Yeah. And uh, if it happens that we are losing that first match because of goalkeeping problem, Onana comes in during the second match. And at the group stage, we end up being eliminated. Mm -hmm. Will this complicity between Song and Onana, how will Cameroonians take it? The first thing, I'm going to go on the other side of the argument. First, I'm not worried about Onana's absence, mm. to be very honest with you. I'm not worried about Onana's absence because... Because Onana is there? Not, not really. You know, we were talking earlier on about performance mm. and with, relation, with relationship, with relation to club and national country. Yes. And it's my viewpoint, mm. but Onana hasn't proven to me personally that at the level of the national team he's indispensable. Mm. He hasn't proven to me that he's indispensable. I don't agree with you. Eh? I know. No, I understand. Him, I'm coming. Yes. <laughs> he hasn't proven to me that he's indispensable. Mm. We we saw in the in the World Cup the other match we lost was the match where he played. The first game. Yes, and before that, all the, all, all the times he's coming. Mm. Uh, he's had some good matches, one or two. Like the match at uh, Algeria, 
Cameroon. Exactly. He's had some good matches. But I feel that you, you don't you don't see you don't you don't call the match Cameroon against Ivory Coast. No, I'm just giving no. one of them. I didn't say that was, that was the only. You, match. Yes. you know, you know, you know, performance is, is not evaluated by a few games. We are looking at consistency. proportions, consistency. Mm -hmm. The number of times he has played for the national team, the number of times we needed him, his performance has really been poor to a greater extent. His performance, he's had good games, I'm not refusing, but his performance has been poor. And I think that, I was saying this the other day with someone, I was telling him, it's crazy, but if I were song on Monday, mm. the, that football keeper will play. Because I, I don't want to talk about, uh, but if, if you are an addict of football, you realize that when you give an opportunity to a no name, mm. you see miracles. The person will try to make it like what happened during yes. the World Cup when yes. the opportunity was given to a passing. If I'm saying that if I was against Brazil, yeah, if I was a coach, mm. the that football keeper is the one who play on Monday. You were uh, itching to react. Yes, <coughs> I will. I will say that when I analyze the last goalkeeper that has qualified Cameroon to the World Cup, and when we reached to the World Cup, there was the, there was a problem that they that. Even now, they have not just solved it. Imagine when you know, Onana came here last time to play the, his, his last match in Cameroon. Mm. He said that he, has an, he had an injury. And the next day, when he fly, to, he fly back to, to Manchester, he played. He played. Mm. It means that there's a problem with Cameroon. And they need to tell us what happened exactly, what exactly happened in, in Qatar. Because when you see Onana, no, it's his state of mind. When you see Onana, he doesn't want to play again with Cameroon. So, so he doesn't give his hundred percent. That's we, that, that's no, the way. Not the hundred percent. Not the hundred percent. Because if you see even that team, you can see the no, defender. You, the, Anana, you, you can see answer. the defender. Anana, you can. He's indispensable. That's the, the problem. That. Yes. That's the problem. He is indispensable. He is indispensable. It's his state of mind. He is indispensable. Because you see, you see. Let 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 us talk. The problem with Cameroon is that we do not work for that. We do not have, we do not work, the technical direction and the other federation do not work to have many Onanas. Such a way that when Onanas say, we don't, I don't come, they can replace him immediately. When no. you see, when you look at Ongdua, Ongdua, where does he play? When you look at uh, a party, back, where does the national team? It boils back to what we were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Ondua won the AFCON in 2017. That, that, that was, was then. When was he playing? Where was he playing? <laughs> that was then. Wait, where was he playing? Bas Barcelona B, Barcelona B like You this. understand what I mean? He, he was, but, but he was but, performing well because no, no, we had no, a good well, team. Let me, let me come. In 2017, mm -hmm. we had a good team. No, you when you played, no, no, no. We had remember, we had a, we had a team where we, 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 we did not concede many goals. That 2017 was the most uncertain team. What are you saying? We had a good team. We went to the Afcon in 2017. We had players. Yes, 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 yes. We had we had players that would we 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 didn't know that refused to come. Yes, yeah, we had we had players that we didn't know, and the man behind was the coach. We had a good coach that played we didn't many have tactics. A good team. We didn't have a no, good team. We had a good teams. No, no. We had a, what do you call a good team? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a team of underrated players. Yeah, yeah. That just, yeah. That yeah. Was, not a good, was not a good player. What are you saying? Many That's when you knew him. Say, let me ask you a question. Well, let me remind him something. It is true that the first game, yes. the first game in the AFCON 2017, mm -hmm. five Collins played. No, he 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 he, 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 he started the, 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 at the second the, the second the, game. The, uh, that's just to tell you that the coach himself was trying his players. Yeah, we had no yeah. good team. Five Collins did not play the first match. But when at the end, match, when Five Collins played the second match, he performed, and, he performed and that's when the coach yeah. used him. That's right. Yeah. Could you say before the Afcon that you are counting on Five Collins? You you could not say no. that. No. Yeah. You could not no, say that. Bet, 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 okay, bet, it, it, it is all that we have. It is all that we have a good teams no, and, no, a, no. and a good coach. But the problem with Onana is that he doesn't have a defense, Onana a defense is not, line. Onana is not indispensable. Okay, uh, see, we shall be going out of this, hoping that by the end of today, we'll know if Vincent Bouvaka is coming back or Song will be calling up another player to take his chance at the AFCON. I want us to go to the, 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 the tournament now proper. Looking at the tournament, uh, there is always this uh, belief of the big names of the tournament. I'm talking in terms of teams. Yeah. Yeah. So who are we looking at uh, this time around? All the big names. Yes. All the big names. I, I don't believe in all those surprises here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The surprises, they can, they can try to get to maybe the quarterfinals and yeah. then the big names. Mm. They are there. The big names will always be there. They always answer present. Mm. All of them. Nigeria. Ghana, uh, Nigeria Egypt. The, the, the Afghan in Cameroon at the group stage. That, no, even Algeria, it, it even, happens. It can even, happen. Even Algeria left, but, at, the, left but, at the first, at the first round. But 
The big names mm. will answer present, I feel so. Morocco, Algeria, mm. Egypt, Nigeria, Cameroon, the ones are present, all of them. The ones are present, I feel so, I'm convinced about that. We will have uh, a few situations where maybe an underrated team can, can maybe try to hit up, but they won't get far. They won't get far. Yeah, so settled. He's yes. so settled about it. Yeah, yeah, but I think that football <laughs> is periodical. Eh? There, there is a time for football for each country. Mm. Because uh, you will now understand that uh, Cameroon, look at the early 2000s, mm. the year 2000, 2002, 2004. Cameroon was like a star in, in Africa. Mm. But immediately after, they started dwindling. So you understand that sometimes I realize that there's a time of, of, of football. But then that said, I think that FIFA is also glorified by some of those big names that we have, Cameroon, Senegal, Nigeria. We almost have those big game names. This, these are the names that make the game really worth it. Without these big names, many people don't really go out to watch football. It's just like in Cameroon. Mm. When you, during the early years, we used to know of Roger Miller, we used to know, know of people like Joseph Antoine Bell, they came up to the reign of Eto'o, Boma, Song. Once you didn't see these big names on the field, people just felt there was no football about it. And that is why we think that these big names, even though football has its own surprises, because uh, what we saw Senegal do in Cameroon during the last AFCON, we should believe that, of course, there's a possibility for many players now coming up because football now is no more a, a thing of particular uh, i mean nobody has is a landlord to the football talents now in in, in africa mm. the people are growing and, and you see we should be expecting some surprises and you know too sometimes when we say we even forget said, the, football, said, the surprises <laughs> will have uh, <laughs> a limit <laughs> yes, yes, of course they should have a little limit mm. so whose country uh, whose co the whose country doesn't come just for a gala, a gala match if you want to cut the war we are not seeing them perform very well in the past then you should supply that with the home advantage they have which cameroon didn't have I mean, since uh, with the last outcome, I think that uh, Ivory Coast too is going to revive and come up very strong, strongly. And uh, with the young stars, young players wanting to have international fame, mm. I think that each and every continent, and you know, I have said that football in Africa is, I mean, the AFCON is the African World Cup. And therefore, every country now, you know that politics is thriving now through football. Yeah. You remember what happened when they told brought in the former uh, CAF president to the president during the election in, in 2018. He played a big role in politics. So every president, every country now in Africa wants to use sports, to liberate sports for their own uh, uh, bright uh, uh, future, for their own country, for their economy and whatsoever. And therefore, every country is backing up. That is why most players are received by the national, by the president of each country when they are, uh, uh, or they are sent up by the, the, the Thank you. So I think we should be expecting every surprise from every country this time around. Thank you. And uh, if you are watching us from wherever, you have the opportunity to contribute to our talking point of today through the number you have on your screen. Please do not call, only WhatsApp or SMS. I take this opportunity to welcome uh, uh, Siaka Sh uh, Shuni. Who is just joining us? Uh, you're welcome, sir. Thanks so very much, and uh, a very good afternoon to my fellow panelists, and a special happy new year to my friend and brother, Dr. Dimancho. Thank you so much, sir. And all the million of telespectators of uh, Canal Day. We heard about the other traffic. Traffic, uh, an unexpected traffic, <laughs> heard me on the way, and that's why I'm coming in a little bit late. We shall be getting back to you. We'll give you time to catch your breath. Uh, I move over to uh, Lucas. He said uh, he doesn't believe in surprises. That the big names will storm their authority as uh, big brothers. In every competition. We are talking here in terms yes. of teams. Because yes, there yes. is a difference between big names individually and then it, uh, big, it, big names in, as a team. In every competition, we, 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 have many top, we, we can have many top teams. In the AFCON, we, AFCON we have Cameroon, Morocco. Those are the teams that are already won the, the AFCON. But you know, in Cameroon, uh, during the 2021 AFCON, there's this team. There's this team that has gained the sympathy of the of all the African Comor, Comoros. Yeah, Comoros. Yes. And this year, I will not be surprised to to see this team, Namibia, and the type of organization that uh, and the type of type of play that is put in place surprise us and uh, Gambia you know those are these are the teams that play very well mm -hmm. and the, if you you are not if you are not you have not eaten very well don't come and play <laughs> them because <laughs> they, they, they will make you run and the famous players 
of those teams in Namibia, we, you know, when, when they say Peter Shalulili, mm -hmm. you know what it has done to Cameroon. Yeah, in, in, Cameroon. Uh -huh. And uh, we have in Gambia, Are, and the man behind all that work is uh, Tom Samfield, the, the manager of the team. Uh, uh, who, which are the teams we should watch out for during this uh, AFCON? Uh, obviously, uh, like uh, I heard the other speaker saying, we have to watch out for the, the big names in Africa. Uh, a lot of people are underrating uh, the mighty Cameroon, but I think uh, Cameroon might create a surprise. Uh, we have Egypt, we have Nigeria, we have the host nation, Cote d'Ivoire, even though uh, Cote d'Ivoire, I think they can just benefit from home advantage, but when I look at their squad, their squad is really, really, I think it's the weakest squad many in the last, been, many the weakest squad that, in the uh, last 10 we years. We free Zaha. Yeah. Could you is gingerly? Even I think uh, we fit there is a good player, but he's not a world class player. He's not a world class player. And uh, I think uh, Cote d'Ivoire, within the last 10 years, that's the weakest team I've ever seen for Cote d'Ivoire. And I think the only thing that they can benefit from is home advantage, no. without which uh, I don't see Cote d'Ivoire as a serious contender mm. for this. Uh, we have teams like Morocco, we have Tunisia, we have Algeria, you know, the. Arab, the, the, the non African teams are always uh, very, very unpredictable. And then we have our natural teams like uh, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, and uh, um, uh, we, Senegal. Mm. And then uh, we have outsiders, outsiders like he was saying. We have outsiders like Guinea, Gambia, mm. Namibia, Tanzania, Tanzania. These are countries that have inculcated football as. Uh, as, as a, the, as a as part their, of as, their culture. Yes, as part of their culture. But uh, you know that Cameroon and uh, Nigeria and the other uh, big African names are names that have been uh, uh, have gone down. Names are historic. Yes, uh, they, they are historic, that, yes. and they are not they are not doing so much to improve on their rich history. Mm. And the other teams are struggling to fit in and create surprises. So don't expect surprises. Expect surprises mm -hmm. in this. And in Cote d'Ivoire. Do we see some big names falling out uh, after the group stage? Um, the, the way you sounded, you were not... No, no, no. When I, when I spoke mm. of no surprises, it's like, okay, for example, the Gambia, the Namibia that have been called. Mm. They might give surprises in the sense where maybe in their group, the various groups where they are, they might let's say top the group, for example. Those mm. kind of surprises would be. But I said, and I insisted, they can't go far the surprises will be limited when we start getting to the quarterfinals and so on and then learning from uh, the previous AFCON teams like Nigeria, Algeria they left very early could that persist <laughs> this time around? Uh, it can persist even even Cameroon can can leave the the, the Afcon no, very, no, 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 no. very early. I'm not. I don't. I, I don't <laughs> agree with you. Know. We are about things. <laughs> we are about things. I'm not. I'm not saying that it can. Be. All thing, The only reason is football is that there's no reason. Mm. The best teams. We used to say that the best team is the team that has won, but the best team can be the team that has played very well. You can play very well and you don't win the game. Cameroon can play very well all the games and it doesn't happen it doesn't happen that he has won he has won the game. What do we do? We see we saw we are seeing that the match the match there's a content but at the end there's nothing we have not won. The, that is that is the Afcon. But one of the, the things that I would like to mention is that let's see let's together see that the West African side has been a qualified place of of Cameroon because we win, we won the eighteen eighty four in West African 2000, when I West African 2002, West African, and uh, is that we played the final in 2008, West African. Mm. Uh, maybe we take uh, this message, we have a couple of messages, but let's just take this one. Good afternoon to everybody in the panel. I think Coach Rigobert's song should call Chupu Moting to replace Vincent Abubakar. We all know what he did to the nation, uh, but he is not at 100%. I don't know what he means by that. Uh, let's remain uh, focused. Yes. So that is an opinion that some should call Chupu Moten should come and replace uh, Vincent Abubakar, but I don't see that happening yeah, yeah. because of the recent uh, uh, updates we've had. Of course, I, I will comment on that uh, we have had a lot of issues like this happen. And you know, even Roger Miller was one, I mean, included in his court by the President of the Republic, mm -hmm. a woman where he was uh, 
uh, excluded at one moment. Just, just to say that sometimes you put uh, the nation's interests at the fore and then you leave private interests behind because I really see that there are a lot of individual interests in some of the decisions that the coach uh, Rebo Benson is taking. And let me come back to what we are talking about. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. The surprises of the tournament. Yeah, the surprises of the tournament. And, and I was trying to develop a trend. A, a trend was that is that you know today most uh, countries are thriving mm. because of football. They are getting international recognition because of football. Most countries are having stability because of football, and therefore they don't take football lying down. Nearly that what? Imagine Cameroon losing and even going out of the uh, 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 stage. Uh, uh, um, and, I mean, coming back home, you know what Cameroonians will feel towards even they don't now. It's not a problem of football now. It becomes a, a political problem. So it means that what? Most countries now take football to be an important aspect of the country's development, and therefore, uh, football about the big teams now. Uh, everybody is trying to form the morass of the teams of, as they are going for the outcome. They put the players and the squad at a very, very comfortable position in which they are able to give in their best. And that is why they give them almost all they, they, they need. We remember this, uh, like Ito was asking about four billion <coughs> to take the, the, the team to, to, to Ivory Coast. This is important because he wants to give the best because the president of the Republic will not make a speech without talking about Indomitian Lawyer. People do not know that. You know that this crumbling of the Indomitian Lawyer will mean the crumbling party of the nation called Cameroon. And this is how all the other countries are taken. And therefore, talking about the big names, I always think that there is this high chance for this small we call small teams to try because of what the importance, the central role which football plays in individual lives of the people. I started by saying here on the panel that sometimes for the whole moon we are going to forget that we have problems in Cameroon. <laughs> and then we only remember on the 11th of February that we had some problems when we get on that next day and Cameroon has been eliminated and then our problems come out to the fore and then we start suffering from uh, oh, corruption, that? suffering from uh, uh, high prices of goods <laughs> and all of that. Okay. I don't want to get into when you look at our group, yes, yes, we are still yes, talking yes, about yes. the small teams that can uh, be mm -hmm. problematic. When you look at our group, uh, we have Senegal, Guinea, uh, the Gambia, and Cameroon. And uh, looking at uh, Gambia's performance in Cameroon during the AFCON, they left. Uh, they came for the very first time, and then they reached the quarterfinals. This time around, <laughs> do you see Gambia being a, a threat to even Senegal and Cameroon at the group stage? Yes, I will still stay. Uh, Focus on my school of thought mm. that uh, these small nations, in quote, might create surprises mm. in this Afghan in Cote d'Ivoire. You bear with me that uh, anyway, with the con with the present uh, context mm. where we have four teams and the first two mm. teams are automatically qualifying, I think uh, considering that with my patriotism and my steadfastness to my nation, I know Cameroon is going to qualify. I'm now trying to see between the Gambia and Senegal who is going to come <laughs> <laughs> behind. And then if probably they perform best and then might be one of them can become the third, the third best to join them in the round of 16. Mm. And then you know what, 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 what gives me that strong conviction that Cameroon is going to perform so very well in this AFCON is because you know the legendary rivalry between Cameroon and Nigeria mm. has transferred now to Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire. Mm. And then you know we consider Côte d'Ivoire as our in-law. <laughs> and you don't go to your in-law's compound. Mm. You don't go to your in-law's backyard and go, and go as and a go fragile back. man. Mm. You go to show your strength. Even if you are not strong, you remove your last strength mm. to prove that you are a tough man. Mm. So I think that uh, the least we can go in this AFCON in Cote d'Ivoire is the finals. Uh, the ball gets rolling to the Ivory Coast in Guinea-Bissau. Yeah. Where do you see the team of Ivory Coast getting in this tournament? Is it, uh, would they be like, would they gather momentum as a host and prove many uh, wrongly? Mr. Serka said when he, when he started that uh, in the last 10 years, this is the weakest squad Ivory Coast has had. Because it's the one they have gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, when he was saying that, I wanted to chip in and tell him that when you feel that they are down, that's when you can be surprised. So the fact that you feel that they have the weakest squad mm -hmm. is instead the reason to be scared. Because I said, when you put an underdog player in the field, in the game of football, mm -hmm. you will be amazed by the miracles and the things this player can perform. There are players in that squad 
who will want to prove mm. that okay i got my chance let me give it so i think that they might not win it yes but they will perform they will perform i think the least they can do is the semi-finals as a host nation that's the least they can do that's the least they can do you share this interview? Yes, they, we, uh, we, don't, we don't win a game before playing. Mm. It is so that when you put the two teams together, every course has an advantage. But if... In terms of uh, In players. terms of the, the individuality of the players that mm. they have, mm. uh, if you see, if you take a piece, uh, this Guinea-Bissau, mm. the key player there is Mama Badi, who plays at, at Lyon. Mm. He's the one that controls the technical is a technical support of the team yeah. but uh, in every course we have Kessier who has played in Barcelona mm. we have we have Sebastian Alex so that he will not be he will not be there today but at the end I will not be surprised the surprise there uh, will be that uh, Guinea Bissau uh, this Guinea Bissau wins wins the game and he doesn't have anything to lose he will put all the strength to, to win the game. Mm. It is a court that have that has many, many things to lose. Because if they if they lose again Guinea Guinea Bissau, no, the problems the problems start. <laughs> <laughs> they have their reputation to protect they can lose. Yeah, as, it, as, as a I host think, nation I today. Think, yeah I think uh, there are two things that could be watching going in for mm. patriotism and then that unity that they want to build up. You know, Kudubwa uh, is a fragile country. And I also want to put this link between football and what is going on in each country. Kudubwa is politically fragile. And there's one thing that they should defend, that national unity. We, you often say that football is a unifying factor. Because they, you go to Kudubwa, you don't know who is a Muslim, who is a Christian, who is it, because everybody is going to come out to support them. And I think that this is where that patriotism is, will be illustrated, will be incarnated. And that is where the players are going to prove to that mm. they have not come for a gala match. They have not come to, for money. They have come to show proof of the fact that they belong to this great nation, Côte d'Ivoire. And I don't see uh, a Côte d'Ivoire bound down to any given result. No, uh, they are going to show proof. Even if the, 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 the experience has shown that on the first match, during the first match, the host country usually gives in its best. And it's always very difficult for a host country to lose the first match because they usually want to give this on. Because it is on this match, the very first match, is much more mobilized. As the tournament goes on, they, 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 I mean, you know, it keeps on doing their well. So today, they are going to move our world called their own boomer. Mm. And I'm sure that uh, <laughs> victory is yes. Yes, yes, yes. I see, I see. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. just to add that, Briefly. this, this Gide Bissau has gone uh, during the qualifiers. Nigeria and Abuja are one not, and during the friendly game they won uh, Equatorial Guinea two three not. It is a team that can that can create surprise. Yeah, create surprise, but not the first game. All things that happen in football, not the first game. Not the first game, right? All things, many things that happen can happen when when we talk about football. Is a host nation? No, 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 really. If it was the second game, you said it for the Warriors, but not the first game. Anyway, yes, I want to share with him mm. share his view for those of us who watched uh, the opening game Camerun, in the 1990 world cup Camerun, against Camerun against argentina. and argentina yes. <laughs> and uh, nobody thought it would happen <laughs> argentina wasn't really ready the but, but oman big <laughs> oman big and the others made it Happen. Happen, yeah. but and remember I think, that Argentina had a big name. <laughs> yes, and they were coming a superstar. Big name. We, we thought that. And after that, they won. They won the World Cup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the difference here is that Argentina wasn't the host. Uh, we are talking about Cote d'Ivoire, who is hosting, host, yeah. and they will not want to allow uh, Guinea Bissau to maybe to date their name on the very. That that they, the they very will not want to Gentlemen, allow. That is that to, they will not want yes, to allow. I want us to look at another angle of. Uh, we were talking about teams. Let's go individual now. Which are the players to watch out for during this uh, tournament? I begin with you, uh, Notch. Oh, uh, you want us to start with Cameroon? Many say globally. Many say the African Cup of Nations is a different ball game. I think uh, the I think uh, Boniface is coming to his first Afcon yes. of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and he has a lot to prove. I feel I'm even confident that he might start in front of Osimhen. Mm and he's been prolific in the Bundesliga and we might be shocked at what he will do. I think, uh, like I said, I mentioned Nkudu of Cameroon. 
I feel if he's given the opportunity, yeah, yes, if he's so given. He has been the photographer of the. <laughs> yeah. saw images of him taking pictures. So I think if he's given the opportunity to start, mm. he will. I know the coach. I know we have uh, Toko Ikambi who plays the same win with him, but I will say that Toko Ikambi has had many opportunities to prove. Sometimes he has proven. Sometimes he's been there. I think he has scored a lot of key goals for us mm. in the past. But I think with this competition, given that uh, Mbwemo, for example, is absent, who plays on the on the left side, Nkudu should be given the opportunity to start on the right. And if they want to obviously play with uh, uh, Toko Ikambi or Munga Malo, they might send one of them on the left side. But I think Kudu should be given the opportunity to start the game and it might be an opportunity for him to prove that he can do something with Kambu. In the World Cup, when he came, he, 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 he was on fire even at that time, but he didn't really have the opportunity. Mm. Yeah, he was given a few minutes and so. But I think with this Afcon, if he's given the opportunity, I think we should watch out for him. We have a lot of big names uh, making us proud in Europe. I mean, meaning different, from different African countries, like the Ossimans. Uh, do we see them uh, maintaining their status as uh, one of as, uh, the, the players that many look up to? Uh, this the problem is the problem with those these players are there are that, is that when they, they are in their teams they score but when they come back to to the national team they don't perform very well as they used to perform Why? during the team we don't maybe the type of the the type the the, the, the type of player they are playing with the style put is in it, place is by, it the Zambuangisa by, the coach, said, by uh, the coach yes maybe that that Zambuangisa can can that philosophy can be worked here but the the players that for me, can be the top in this Afcon. I've named some uh, one here is Peter Shalulele of Namibia. Mm. You know his place and Mamelodi Sundowns, and he uh, it, it, it did he it does uh, many things there. And we can see Ben Taleb of Algeria and Ben Nasser Ben Taleb has been the MVP of the 2019 uh, Afcon. Afcon. And uh, the last person would be Enesri of Morocco. And Nisri has been the, the the top scorer of Morocco during the, the the World Cup. These are the players that I I wish they will they will do something in this. Every World Cup. Every, every every player of Morocco will do something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Morocco but particular uh, advantage because they want scoring and <laughs> yes. giving victory to the team. L uh, let's look at uh, the mobilization. It has been huge. Many are of the opinion that the mobilization is even more than what we saw in Cameroon. I take maybe the press, for instance. Uh, the number of journalists that requested for accreditation to go to Ivory Coast, I think the percentage was about more than 50% increase as it has ever happened. Shows that the mobilization this year is exceptional. Yeah, it's exceptional. You know, also uh, about mobilization is competitive mm. because each country wants to organize in an exceptional way. Remember when uh, Mosepe came to Cameroon and said this is one of the best ever AFCON that they have ever uh, organized. Mm. And uh, of course, Ivory Coast hearing this would also want to, to meet much more better. And many people get to a country, they look at the stabilization of the country, they look at what the country seeks to offer, mm. it's for touristic purpose. You see, people don't just go to the country. And therefore, mobilization means that what? You want to welcome people. And when you want to welcome people, you sell out the country. And therefore, I think could even have sold the country. I even saw one of the stadium. It is so exceptional. I've not seen that kind of a stadium anywhere in Africa. And you, you see, you see that uh, one of the things that they want to do is to sell their touristic potentials mm. to the world. Mm. And that is why this mobilization and I've, even here in Cameroon, I've seen even radio stations dispatching their own uh, uh, team to. Africa. So it is because of what people have seen the country stand to offer mm. to them and. Uh, they wanted to make a beautiful, a beautiful. I, I, I said at the beginning of this program that African Nations Cup is like the Africans' World Cup, and it is a religion, and, and and therefore people want to go there to worship God in the best possible way that way that they can. And therefore, this mobilization is showing proof of the fact that Africa wants to make its sport great. And two, secondly, you see, we have had uh, the, the president of uh, 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 CAF who is proving to, to make football yes. who wants to make the African football better mm -hmm. and also make it competitive. Remember that in Europe, people sometimes refuse to uh, leave African players because they think that uh, the African Nations Cup is like in Takatier. Mm -hmm. for, for Europe, for some people in Europe, it is not nothing to go by. And that's why they don't even see the importance of the African Nations Cup. And then it is us in Africa to make it 
If you don't make your jujus frightful, nobody will fear it. And I think that this is exactly what this mobilization is about. Talking about the organization, gentlemen, we shall uh, move over to Ivory Coast to meet uh, our special envoy, Amy Catherine Mukuri, who is standing by. Uh, Amy Catherine, minutes uh, as to the start of uh, the competition. What is the atmosphere out there like? Good morning to everybody in the panel. So actually I'm standing in Plateau in Abidjan. We are just in a few hours from the beginning of the competition for the launch of the competition with the big ceremony that we are waiting uh, at the start of uh, Ebimpe. And uh, now I can say that there is a lot of people coming around here uh, to witness uh, the African Cup of uh, Nation. Uh, we saw a lot of Cameroonian there in Yamusukru and uh, yeah in uh, Abidjan you know uh, Africos is going to play against Guinea so uh, we went to see how the Guinean was were prepared uh, to face uh, Ivory Coast as you can see there are a lot of flags of different countries of uh, Ivory Coast yeah so the celebration and the preparation we have to say it was very huge Everything was set up to receive Africa a year in Ivory Coast and especially in Abidjan that you know we can consider actually as um, as the capital of showbiz. So there are a lot of stars coming from different countries and we cannot wait to see how this how big this ceremony is going to be you know we have some news from uh, uh, the indomitable lions we are waiting for the latest news concerning abu bakar vincent but we have to say that uh, it went at nine o'clock so ten o'clock in uh, douala and yaoundé to do an irm and uh, finally there were some new development according to that um, the information we gave you uh, yesterday that finally maybe Abu Bakr Vincent is going to play uh, with the Lion but not for the first match not for the second but probably for the third match but it was confirmed that he has been injured uh, during uh, the training session with his colleagues so we are waiting for the fika food communication the communication of uh, fika food to give us the latest details but that's the last information that we're having from the indomitable lion from abu bakar vincent and uh, yeah we are standing uh, with uh, andre miabo maop and yves chamade and we are going to give you uh, the information concerning uh, the debut of the ceremony the launching of the competition thank you so much uh, Amy Catherine Mokuri uh, we want to salute uh, your efforts in uh, the strife for bilingualism many of you you know her she is a French journalist but she has just uh, succeeded to deliver updates there from Ivory Coast in the English language thank you so much uh, Cathy uh, gentlemen uh, the mobilization is on. Many, all of us are waiting for uh, the opening ceremony. Yeah, of course we are waiting. It's, it's an exciting moment. We've been waiting for it for, for a while now. And we hope it's going to be beautiful as preparation has been so far. And we hope that the opening ceremony, because it's also very important, mm -hmm. that it's as beautiful as the entire preparation has been. So we guess it will be. Of course, it's, it's a huge competition and i just want to make reference to the fact that she she spoke about uh, the issue of abaka vincent yes yeah like i said probabilities how he can get back probabilities back. exactly mm -hmm. well it's true we are waiting for for official communique from fake food and then to be sure mm -hmm. whether he's out completely or if he's going to be able to intervene at a, at a certain level into the competition but like i said even if he's not able to we have players that can fill in we have players that can use this as an opportunity mm. to be able to step in into his shoes mm. and, and show us that they two can be counted on, they two can, can, can have a place, you know. It's, and there are always surprises when we're going into, we spoke earlier on here about the 2017 AFCON, when we're going into 2017, we, none of us 
Uh, I'm not sure we knew basketball. I'm not sure we had basketball now. Yeah, uh, I know. The Chinese uh, was the player of the tournament. <laughs> was the player of the tournament. <laughs> so uh, I think that it's an opportunity for others to step in yeah. and improve and, and, and get us excited. There's a reaction here. I don't share the idea from one of the panelists who says uh, Nkulu should uh, be caught up to replace. I think nobody talked about that here. Yeah. I think that was just a... Uh, we have seen the welcome in from Ivory Coast. That is the African spirit we want. The welcoming has been so exceptional. Yes, you would bear with me that uh, football has become uh, a tool, a diplomatic tool. Mm. And uh, the Afghan is not only football, it is a cultural and a touristic jamboree. Yeah. And uh, uh, the Ivory Coast uh, organizing this Afcon this year, they are not leaving any stone unturned. Yeah. They are seizing the opportunity to sell the image of their country mm. because uh, mm. tourists, a lot of tourists will be coming in and then uh, it's going to boost their economy and uh, uh, they are going to investors too will be coming in. And then you, you see that uh, they have to use it as a platform to sell their football. Mm. As uh, my brother was saying, uh, as uh, <laughs> he was saying, uh, no matter what happens, Cote d'Ivoire is going to do everything possible today to win the match <laughs> if, if they have to play with one leg <laughs> because this is an opportunity not to miss it comes once in a decade or two or three decades and then um, to add up to uh, what uh, he was analyzing uh, i wanted to say something uh, players to watch out for there is a player in our squad that a lot of people are undermining what he can do and I think this should be his last AFCON. I want to think that if Nigeria Clinton is given the opportunity to play, he's going to create surprises. Like one of the yes. most experienced in the yes, sport right yes. now. He's going to create surprises in this AFCON. Mm -hmm. I just crave the indulgence of our manager, Rigo Besson, that he should trust in the clairvoyance of Nigeria Clinton and give him playtime. And I believe it, Nigeria Clinton is going to create surprises. Mm -hmm. Just to add a bit to what he said, I think the game before last, where he played... Uh, uh, link up play between the midfield and the attack, he was exceptional. Yes, he was very exceptional. Mm. Uh, Lucas, what should we expect from this Afghan that we've never had before? You know, before answering the question, I would say uh, the previous president of the CAF was saying that uh, Afghan uh, will serve to the African country to develop their infrastructure. And you can see when Amanda. they organize, when you are, when they when we organize uh, Afghan here, we mm build many many field many stadium and the federations many federations of Cameroon are using these infrastructures to to make perform their uh, uh, their sport mm. now the expectation <coughs> is that it is I have a, an huge expectation that the, the first thing is that you know the image the the broadcast of the the, the image of can of the of this Afghan as uh, has climbed a little bit. You you will see that the the, the the winner will have maybe four million, four billion, seven seven, seven billion. billion. You, you you know it is. It will be quite interesting. And the expectation is that we should have a good good matches and good players because uh, the 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 Afcon is the. Competition played by the best players of the of the continent. You mean, and after that, we can have the players who can sign abroad. You you have you have seen, mm -hmm. but is because it improved very well in that Afcon that he signed the contract that he has he has, he has, he has yes. got in. Yes, and he just uh, mentioned an element which is very important when you look at what uh, Francis Mugu did uh, for fear of losing his club. Many would rather prefer to play the Afcon to gain uh, bigger. Clubs. But if I if I am Francis Muge, I wouldn't I wouldn't come briefly. I wouldn't come because uh, you know Francis Muge is still young. There are many young players that have gone to the to their national teams, and when they came back, they did not perform as when they they, they, they at the stage that anyway, they were before. We that can is, see it with that's uh, right, Mugoko, that, Mugoko the, of uh, Germany. That's right, but that does not cancel the fact that back, there are equally young players mean, that have come to their national team little known, and they perform very well to the advantage of having a bigger club. That's the exception. I think that we are getting rules. we are getting to the end of the program already, and I will throw this question. I begin with you, taking everything into consideration. 
maybe before you throw a question, let me go around the table <laughs> as you started out. I was going to say that just one thing. We don't have time, please. Yes. Okay, just briefly, just, in 10 seconds. Just, just to say that uh, one of the things I want from this AFCON that we should have a new name on the list of the AFCON winners. This is going to raise the spirit that is, of competitive spirit. That is, where, of, of the, that is where I was coming ah, from. Ah, that's right. Taking uh, everything into yes. consideration, who do you see lifting the trophy? Ah, well, I will not want to point on a particular team because mm. it will be as if I'm favoring any particular <laughs> team. I stand for Africa, you know, I'm a pan African. Thank you. And I wonder anything that happens in Guinea Bissau happens in Cameroon, anything in Namibia happens in Cameroon, anything that happens in Kudua. So Thank and therefore, you, uh, I will Mr. want Sita. a new name that Mr. will come up and bring this competitive spirit for the next upcoming. Up Mr. Seka? In as much as uh, we want uh, a new name to come up to boost the image of African football, Thank it you. doesn't kill my spirit of patriotism that I want Cameroon to lift that Thank tournament. you. <laughs> no, I, I see Cameroon winning the competition. Okay, the final Cameroon uh, I, I'm seeing the final uh, Senegal, Morocco. <laughs> now, who lifting the trophy? Yeah, maybe Morocco. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. It is rather unfortunate we have a ton of messages here, but time will not permit us uh, to take all the messages because some are pretty long and uh, we cannot really have time to read them out. So it is here that we draw the curtains of uh, uh, this uh, program, giving you the appointment this evening. You know, Canada will, will be broadcasting all the matches of uh, the AFCON. Do not miss out. On, every, on any single moment. Stay blessed.